All right. Well, uh, my, my name is Zeke Leo. I want to welcome everybody to our second or third a virtual a cloud-based workshops uh, on PyCAF and SP. Uh, I'm going to give a very short uh, introduction on why we do it, and uh, then we're going to move uh, there to have a PyCAF today and the SB tomorrow. Again, my name is Zeke Quelio. I'm a professor at Penn State University. And we have two presenters for this workshop. One is Richard Otis. He's a scientist at the JPL, NASA. And Brandon is a graduate student at Penn State. He will finish soon uh, in August this year. And then we'll start at the Lawrence Livermore National Lab in the fall. Okay, uh, first I want to talk about the CAFAD. Uh, in the title, you can see I have three things, Pi CAFAD, S and the CAFAD. The CAFAD is about a calculation of phase diagrams. It models properties of individual phases. And basically free energy as a function of temperature, pressure, and the composition. And it's a very important internal degree of freedom. That means it can apply to non-equilibrium states. And the CAFAD has a community. It can show it's shown on the www.cafad.org. It had a conference since 1973, and it has a private foundation since 1975, and it has a journal since 1977. And to perform CAFAD modeling, there are tools and databases, and some commercial ones many of you are using. And also, there are some in the last several years, there are also several open source codes uh, like OpenCAD, and some, some Chemica. And uh, in this workshop, we'll talk about the two codes, the PyCAD and SBay, that uh, we have been developing. It started uh, say, some years ago uh, with a particular effort by Richard Otis as his PhD thesis on PyCAD. And also, the PhD thesis by Richard uh, by Brandon Buckland for his, uh, for his PhD thesis on aspect. One very important thing, a, a feature or features of this course is that you can do high throughput CAFAD modeling and it can put in new models, custom models, and it has understanding quantification capability. Okay, so I want to mention that uh, as, as I say that some of the names has Kasai there in our function. So it's not only for equilibrium. So if you look at the some of the dynamics, we know that the first law does not uh, limit the system to uh, some of the name equilibrium, but the Gibbs equation does. Okay. So what's term is dropped in Gibbs equation is this driving force term was dropped uh, in the equation by Gibbs in 1870s. And they say it becomes equilibrium only. Now, if you add this term back into the Gibbs formula, the Gibbs energy, then you find that it's not for equilibrium. If you drop this term, then, then it's for equilibrium. And that means the CAFAD models the Gibbs energy, including the equal internal degree of freedom. So CAFAD is for non equilibrium system and equilibrium system, of course. So because I hate the internal state of variables. And there are a few examples which are very critical to our CAFAD modeling. The first one is uh, the last stability. For example, basic copper. And basic copper actually forms in the solution of a BCC iron and the copper solution. Okay, so we need the energy for BCC copper in order to model the basic solutions. So that's where this last stability of this term here, defined by Larry Kaufman more than 50 years ago. And then in addition to that elasticity, we actually also have the elasticity in compounds, like the multi subplex model. Then you actually talk about the elasticity in the end member, we call it. So order. Then you have polarizations, you have all defects. And the defects are actually part of the internal degree of freedom. We, we deal with all the time, right? We deal with green boundaries, we deal with vacancies and dislocations and twins, second fourth, everything we have in our material science engineering. So kind of modeling is for the Gibbs energy of individual phases. We take the data from the derivatives, okay? And also from phase equilibrium. 
in principle, this is enough to give the friend function, but it's not accurate enough. So face boundary, we need a face boundary to refine the model parameters. So our prediction is more accurate. And we, we start with one component, the binary returner and the model component systems. And then we can do the material design, proper equilibrium, non-equilibrium. And uh, even more important are the uh, chemical physical properties through the first and second derivatives. So this chart uh, figure is from a uh, Richard's PhD thesis. And he, he understood at that time how capital worked. And if also found the issue we have is that when we start from the experiment data, we build up our data collection, we do the modeling, then we deliver databases. You see this one-way traffic here. So a lot of the important information or knowledge uh, were lost along the way. So that of course is, uh, well, it's, it's in principle okay, I can use my database. However, the issue is that when you started to, if we have a bigger database, you want to modify it because you get new data. Where the new data from, of course, from the experiments or most important from DFT calculations. From the first point, I give out a lot more data. Now we get new data, now we need to revise it. For example, for the six component system, if you want to change one parameter in one element, you have to change a lot of systems. But however, the information, the knowledge we had in the process already lost. So we cannot do it. We could not do it. So it's very challenging to do that, right? So that's what motivated us uh, to develop a new tools and to do it. So we know that we did the modeling and the experiment and data, that's how we have done at least the, uh, in the 30, of, 30 years of last 50 years, the 20, 20, 25 years ago. And the first principle the calculation became very powerful, very kind of uh, a, become a, user tools, put it this way, user tool. And they can do the uh, finite temperature statistics, we can get more data, and then you enhance the, the particular power of CAFA databases. And uh, in this paper I wrote last year, and the overview paper showed that in addition to thermodynamics, talk about the stability, typically thermodynamics called equilibrium thermodynamics, we can talk about actually a lot of other properties, cross phenomena like spec coefficient, um, and also the transport properties too, and mechanical properties even. Okay, so you actually can do a lot of properties because if we can understand the internal state of variables we have. So it's all, so it's all these properties are really, are really related to the internal state of variables. If you can define, you can calculate. Okay, so to do that, we need tools, right? So we have high school tools we have been developing last uh, 10, 15 years. And it's all open source we have. If you go to github.com, Faces Research Lab, you can find all the codes we have there. And uh, I really want to thank uh, Brandon and Richard Brandon. And they started using GitHub many years ago. Now it's become, it's, it's a fantastic platform for software tool development. I encourage you to use it if you have not done that. And uh, we have two tools, two sets of tools for data generation which is the machine learning and the DFT, TK uh, for free energy. That's very important for free energy. And we have a paper come out, of both pa web papers come out for both the tools. And then the data processes as part of the SDA doing data process. We can develop databases, then we are collaborators develop the uncertain quantification tools too. Again, as I mentioned, we do workshops. So it's a, a big, because we have many tools now, you want know, you know to put them together, we, we formed the Material Genome Foundation. Uh, uh, it was created by Richard and, uh, and me. Uh, we hope to get more tours. So that's what collaboration starts. We have getting more tours and work together. Okay, so put all together, we, have, we create a data ecosystem. Basically, we have a proto data, which is uh, the raw data uh, for our uh, modeling. You can see radical prediction. We're talking about a, a machine learning, DFT, AMD, finite element simulation, then experiment data, right? All together, give us the input data for the model. And then we do the a process data, we use PyCAP s to develop a CAF databases. Okay. After we get database, we can do material design, we can do the manufacturing design, we can even predict the, the, the service time. And the, it was about 15 years ago, I was talking with industry people and the, we can design material. It's really important for industries that we only zero scrap. 
I call it dynamic zero scrap manufacturing. What it means is that here your manufacturing process, your process and parameters can vary, right? Your composition can vary, your processing can vary. The idea is that with Kava database behind it, you can adjust them accordingly based on what you have uh, before. So you can continue to adjust your processing. So you always maintain your property, actually your faces at the optimum level. In that case, at the end, you have no scrap anymore. I call it dynamic zero scrap manufacturing. And of course, we have to remember that we have to do the, uh, the predict the life service, service, service lifetime for the materials, right? Engine, for example, should it be 1,000 hours, 5,000 hours? How long can we use after that? So predict the service life time is actually very important. Again, it's a phase formation, okay? It's, it's what a phase is gonna form during the process, right? So it's the kind of data we should be able to behind all of them. Of course, the last one is that you do the cycle, a recycle of materials, right? Recycle is very complex because when you recycle, you, you don't get the same materials and we get a few materials mixed together. So you need a bigger database to do that. Okay? So we think this data ecosystem will be very dramatic, very useful for the future. Uh, as you probably at a cafe meeting, you mentioned that uh, uh, Apple, they are all aluminum alloy for their, for their products that are, are all recycled in them. Okay. All right, so the other one, we, we could create an ocean of data, basically integrate all the data together, whether you have your individual data or your, data, your, your secret data, put all that together, hope we can create this kind of ecosystem. We continue to use the packup aspect or new tools to generate database and the for this cycle, continues to generate new materials, new applications with better performance, with less impact on the environment. Okay, with that one, I, I, I think I stop here. I wanted to thank you for your interest in attending this uh, workshop. I hope uh, this will be for my foundation, a, a platform for us to collaborate uh, down the road. With that one, uh, I would like to have Richard to start the, the PACAF uh, uh, workshop, portion of the workshop. Thank you.